What's up everyone, how's it going? So today we're talking about six separate topics, all packed into one video for you. The first one is going to be, when should you work out? So should you work out in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? Is there an optimal time to work out? And how do you find which is going to be best for you? The second one is going to be, how long should you work out? So should your workouts be 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 2 hours, longer, shorter? Uh, this can vary a lot from individual to individual, and we'll talk about how to find what is appropriate for you. Also, how many days per week? 3 days per week, 7 days per week. Number 4, multiple workouts per day. Should you be doing doubles? Should you be doing triples even? I've seen people do that. Is that effective? Is that appropriate? Can it be a way to increase your progress and accelerate your game. Number five, we're going to talk about warm-ups. How do I warm up for a lift? Um, how do I get my body ready? How do I ensure that I don't get injured? I'll go through how I typically warm up. And then finally, number six, I'll go into a little bit about recovery times. So should you rest one minute, two minutes, three minutes? What is an appropriate uh, amount of time to recover between sets? So I know this is a lot to go into for one video, and it's pretty ambitious of me, so stay tuned and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so first we're talking about when should you work out? What time of day should you work out? Should you work out in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening? When is the best time for muscle gain and for fat loss? Keep in mind for all of these, I'm talking from a sort of bodybuilding perspective uh, as well as strength. I'm not really talking about some other factors. Those are the primary reasons that I, uh, that I work out and that I assume most of my listeners work out. So you have something called a chronotype. Chrono means time, and type means type. So you have your time type. So this is gonna be the time of day where you feel best and you perform best. Now some people do perform best in the morning. If they are morning people, they might feel more active and energetic in the morning. And this seems to be particularly true of cardiovascular exercise. So a lot of people, they feel best running in the morning. They feel like they have more endurance, more energy, and if you go running, the morning is actually probably a pretty good time to do it. If someone is an evening person, they are probably going to feel horrible in the morning. That's just how it's going to be. And they will feel better exercising later. So you probably know your chronotype. I don't have to explain to you if you're a morning person or a night owl or an evening person. You probably can figure out for yourself which you are. If you cannot figure out which you are, you are probably somewhere in the middle, in which case it doesn't matter that much, but I would still generally recommend the afternoon and the evening to work out for a few reasons. One reason is that morning people are okay in the afternoon and evening, but evening people are horrible in the morning. They, their performance absolutely tanks in the morning, whereas morning people in, af in the afternoon they're mostly okay, you know, they, they might feel a little bit worse, but for the most part, it's okay. So if you are not really sure what you are, it's best to err on the side of working out in the afternoon and the evening. Another factor is that when you are doing heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, it does take time for your spine to warm up. I would never squat or deadlift within an hour of waking up just because your spine is not really ready. It's not hydrated, it's not really warmed up, you haven't been moving around enough. And so if you're doing some of these heavy spinal loading movements, I would say the afternoon or evening is going to be a much more appropriate time. And if you have a schedule where you can only work out in the morning some days and evening some other days, I would definitely schedule lower body workouts on the evening days just because you'll find that squats and deadlifts are safer and easier to perform once you have been you know, awake for longer. Most studies find that evening will produce more muscle gain, up to about 50% more quickly. So in one study that lasted six months, men who trained in the morning, they saw their quads grow by an average of 12%, which is not bad, it's okay. But those who hit the gym later in the day, they grew 50% more they grew 18%. So 12% in the morning, 18% in the evening, which is a pretty significant difference considering everything else was exactly the same. 
so you just get more effective results by training later in the day. However, keep in mind this is a study. It's a study on other people. And what the researchers found is that there was a lot of between subject variation. So essentially, those morning people who trained in the afternoon, they were okay. But the evening people who trained in the morning, they didn't train well at all. So it's important to realize that there is that chronotype variation. Now, some people are going to say to me, what if I drink coffee? Well, that is okay. And drinking coffee can improve your performance, especially in the morning. However, researchers found that it can't quite you know, catch that evening group. Caffeine can improve your performance, but it's still somewhere in the middle between the morning and the evening group. And I would say caffeine is a good thing for the morning. I drink caffeine and you know, drink coffee every morning but it can't fully replace your circadian rhythm. It's also worth noting that you can perhaps adapt to morning training. So the first time you train in the morning, you might lose like 10% strength or 20% strength. You'll feel like garbage. Um, but if you do it for a week, for two weeks, you can probably adapt to where you get within a few percent of your normal strength. All right, number two, how long should I work out? Well, this is gonna vary on a lot of factors. I hear this a lot. Oh, if I work out for more than 45 minutes, then my testosterone crashes because my cortisol goes up and my balls fall off and I don't get any gains. No, okay, that's not true. You have to take into account a few factors. One is your nutrition. If you go into a workout completely fasted, yeah, you might not wanna work out for that long because you won't have the energy to do so. And yes, your cortisol will be spiked. However, if you have carbs before your workout and during your workout, this will be much less of an issue. I've had workouts that are two hours long where I did like 50 sets and because my nutrition was on point, I felt like I had, you know, I was full of energy and I really didn't feel any negative effects even from doing super high volume. So this is where your nutrition is super important. You also have to take into account your recovery and your frequency. If you are doing like six times per week training or seven times per week training, yeah, you might not wanna have two hour workouts just because you know you have to come back the next day to hit your body again. Whereas if you're doing like a two day per week kind of thing, maybe you're really busy or something, yeah, you're gonna have to be in the gym for a long time in order to get the volume of work that needs to be done, done. As a general rule of thumb, this will also you know, vary based on your goals. If you're a power lifter and you're resting like five or 10 minutes between sets, you're gonna be in the gym for a long time. But that doesn't mean it's spiking your cortisol because you're resting so long. I mean, if you're just sitting somewhere, your cortisol isn't spiked because it's not really a stress response to anything. You also have to take into account how advanced you are. If you are an advanced athlete, you can just handle more training. You're more durable and you need more training to progress. If you're a beginner, you know, two or three days a week, half an hour per workout could be plenty to progress very quickly. When I started working out, I was working out like 30 minutes per day, 45 minutes per day. Then my second and third year, I upped it to 45 minutes and 60 minutes and then 90 minutes and then I upped my frequency. And right now it's probably 60 to 90 minutes, six times per week, even seven times per week, just because I can handle that increased volume because I have just more training under my belt. So this sort of goes into how many days per week. I would say if you're a beginner, again, like two to three days is fine. You know, you can still make progress. If you're more advanced, probably three to four, maybe five, six, and it really depends on your split, how you wanna split up your volume. The most important thing is gonna be your volume spread throughout the week. How you split it up is just gonna be based on your preferences and your schedule. If you're really busy, you might not be able to go to the gym six times per week. That's just how life is. What about multiple workouts per day? Well, a lot of CrossFitters, a lot of endurance athletes, a lot of weightlifters, they perform you know, a morning workout and an evening workout. Most Kenyan distance runners, they have a 6 a.m. workout, a 10 a.m. workout, and a 4 p.m. workout. So they're running three times per day. The first workout is just a very easy jog. Then the second workout is like the main track workout, like, you know, something really hard or a tempo run. And then the afternoon run is again, fairly light 
to moderate. Pretty easy. And if you're running 150 miles per week or, you know, 200 plus kilometers, that's what's necessary. You know, you're not going to be able to get in that kind of volume just training once per day. Same with weightlifters. Often they will, you know, snatch in the morning, clean and jerk in the evening, or they'll, they'll do front squats and back squats, or they'll do power cleans, power snatches. They'll do different lifts at different times, just because splitting up that volume makes it easier to recover. And if you're in a power sport, you need to be fairly fresh to really exhibit that kind of explosiveness that is needed for progression. If you're a CrossFitter or an MMA athlete, you need to be training multiple energy systems and multiple skills. So you don't want to gas out in the ring, so you need some kind of endurance, but you also need to have power, you need to be explosive, you need to be strong. There's a lot of technical skills involved. If you are a CrossFitter, you have to be ready for anything. You have to master dozens, if not hundreds of skills. And that probably can't really be done training just once per day. You're, it's more effective to split up all those skills and all that volume across all of those skills and do it multiple times per day. So a lot of CrossFit athletes, they're doing wads, you know, two, three, maybe even more times per day. If you're just interested in hypertrophy, I don't think it's really all that effective. I don't think it's really a great idea because you do get diminishing returns and because you're really just working one energy system. You're working one dynamic, one part of the human performance, just building a muscle. And you really run into recovery issues if you are trying to do this. So if you are trying to lift hard and heavy twice per day, well, you're going to be in for a surprise. You're going to be in for a very rude awakening, let's say that. Um, just because you know, you're going to run into recovery issues and it's going to suck. The only way I would implement this into my program would be if you're training like back and biceps, maybe train back in the morning and biceps in the evening, or perhaps maybe even the opposite. Same thing with chest and triceps. And the idea is that you can get a more quality workout for the second body part. Instead of putting them together and doing biceps immediately after back, by giving yourself just a few hours to recover, then you can get you know actually a quality biceps workout. If you're, you know, if you're doing hammer curls after you did a ton of bent over rows, you can't be expecting to curl maximum weight. And so it could be more effective to try to split those up. But again, that's twice as many showers, that's twice as many trips to the gym. Uh, and so honestly, if you're just a recreational athlete, it's not really worth it. I did that a few times a few years ago, but I don't really do it anymore because for me, it's not worth it. I'm just too busy to spend, you know, three hours per day at the gym. All right, let's talk about warming up. This is an answer that I know will disappoint some people for sure, because I don't really do that much to warm up. I just do the exercise and then I add weight and then I add more weight until I get to my working sets and then I do the working sets and then I go home. That's the whole workout. I don't do any like bands or chains or some kind of special workout that you know gets my hips ready or stretching. No, I don't do any stretching. I don't do any of that crap. I just lift the weight, that's all. And if I feel like I need more warmups, then I do more warmups. Sometimes I lift the same weight twice. I might, in the deadlift, I might go 60 kilos, 60 kilos, 80, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. Depending on how I feel. There's no set protocol on how I warm up. It's just how I feel. One exercise that I do use is the Palov press to give you something specific that you'll use. Uh, this seems to get my core worked up, my transverse abdominis firing, get some blood in the abs, which I think is important for lower back health. I will also do face pulls to get the shoulders warmed up before benching or pressing. I feel like that helps a ton with shoulder health and training longevity. One thing to keep in mind is that every exercise is different. So if I'm doing something like a lateral raise, I don't need any warm-ups. I can just go into it right away. If I'm doing something like a squat or a deadlift, I probably need five or six warm-up sets to get ready and to get to my you know, maximum weight. And it's also going to be individual. You'll have to play it by ear. 
All right, that is it for today. Make sure to like the video, it does help a lot. Subscribe to the channel, lots more to come. Stay safe wherever you are, and I will see you next time.